And if you find yourself constantly being hijacked by your thoughts or other appearances, then go back into the body and become aware of the rhythm of the breath, anchoring yourself in that, focusing on the rhythm of the breath. And then a little bit in the corner of your mind, know that you're aware.
questions. If it's here and now, right? Then, when I have a thought which is not here or not now, so I can say to myself, it's not here or it's not now, and then it's okay. If, and so, I wanted to know if, if it's a good system to, to check myself if, if, if awareness is here and now, and then it's enough to check myself in, the, in this. Yeah. Sure. I mean, of course, particularly in the beginning stages of any practice, it's good to have little reminders and checks of are we on track in the practice. And so if that is a little check to, to know whether you're here and present or whether you're off somewhere, that's good. So, yeah, fine. And then the second part is that sometimes I find a thought that fits the here and now like a pain in my body or a noise that comes to my ears. So then it's, it, it's okay for, for the meditation of awareness because it's present, it's here right. right now. So but when we're focusing on the sensations of the breath, it's always present. The breath only happens in the present moment. And so when we're doing that, where we are aware of the breath, in the practice we did yesterday, we're aware of the mind, we're aware of thoughts. In this practice, we're turning awareness upon itself, which means we're not interested in any appearances, regardless of whether they're a thing about the past, present, or future. So we're not interested in any appearance. We're only interested in awareness itself. So. In those practices and in general, we are aware of certain objects. The object can be physical, mental objects. <coughs> and we're implicitly aware of being aware of them. And all we're doing in this practice is making that explicit. We're just turning awareness upon itself and just knowing that awareness is present, awareness is happening. That's all we're focusing on, that awareness is happening. Yeah. So here, introspection, of course, we need introspection to notice if we're becoming dull or distracted as normal. But it's also kind of appearance, or is it part of the... It's part, part of the awareness, isn't it? It's sort of inbuilt. And so, but then you can say that also mindfulness is also part of the awareness? Sure, I mean, mindfulness. I mean, if we don't have mindfulness, we can't be aware. Well, there are many mental factors that are always present. <coughs> but, of course, we are not focusing on... Like, one mental factor that's always present is feeling, which means we're experiencing things as pleasant, unpleasant, neutral. But we're not focusing on feeling in this. We're just focusing on awareness. But to do that, we need mindfulness and introspection to be able to do that. Because without it, without mindfulness and introspection, we'll just be gone. Does it mean that we are uh, actually aware of everything around us, but we, don't, we are not focusing on anything? In this practice, all thoughts will come up, emotions, sounds, sensations, they're there, but we're not interested in them. We're not paying any attention to them. Tomorrow, we're going to combine today's and yesterday's practice, meaning we're going to be resting in this stillness of awareness while observing the movements of the mind simultaneously. That's tomorrow, though. <laughs> um, the case doesn't work for me. <coughs> First, I can stay a long time with my open, but it gets so dry that I have to blink, so the 
Well, you, in fact, you must blink. You should blink as often as you need. We're not doing this. <laughs> Yes, okay, so the first part is that um, that when we're, I think the question is basically that when we're resting in awareness, anything happening is a distraction, even blinking. And so we, we tend not to blink, and then the eyes get dry. And then, of course, also what happens in this practice is, oh, that breathing is annoying, I better stop breathing. <laughs> so we hold our breath. <laughs> We do. Sometimes people do, you know, because it's, it's, you notice it. You don't want to notice it because it's distracting. So people stop breathing and they hold the breath and then suddenly they go... <gasps> <laughs> so, again, let them, let them happen. Let them happen. And, of course, probably as a beginner we'll notice the blinking or the breathing or other things, sounds and sensations. Of course, that's normal. But... When we do, we just release it and we just back to the awareness. So, and you'll find that the more that you get into that, the less you'll notice these things and then the less they'll pull you away from awareness. So the, I think the other question is that here, observe, when we're resting the gaze, somehow the vision is going double. Um, again, I think we're straining the eyes, so because we we're not we don't want to look at anything, so we're sort of trying either consciously or so unconsciously we're unfocusing the gaze, and then everything goes a bit funny. So again, just keep the eyes relaxed, and of course. When we're doing this practice at home, um, just have a blank wall in front of you. Or if you really find even that somehow distracting, switch the light off. Have, I mean, me personally, I like it quite dark, even completely dark. I don't have a problem with falling into dullness. If you have a problem falling into dullness, making the room dark is probably not going to work very well. But if you don't have a problem falling into dullness and you find that even look, sort of having a blank wall is somehow causing some problems with the eyes, go dark, dim, dark, completely dark room. So what's the difference on, uh, if you don't have a room dark or you close your eyes? Because with, with the eyes closed, there's a strong sense of inner and outer. With eyes open, if it's dark, there's no, there's no strong sense of inner and outer. And also, of course, the other thing is, if we meditate with eyes closed, then it's hard to bring this into daily life because generally our eyes are open in daily life. So if eyes open, even if it's dark, in daily life, we, we, we have the habit of being able to do this with eyes open, so very good. Yeah. What you said before to him about being conscious uh, confused me a bit, maybe just a translation thing. Yeah, that's why, yeah, for the, the, she, the question is, I think, confused about this word conscious. And actually, for this practice, it's quite difficult to give instruction. Uh, one is, reason is that any instruction often kicks us into doing mode. So, therefore, you, you know, sometimes this is called awareness of awareness, but I've sort of stopped saying that because if you say be aware of being aware, then people sort of go into this dualistic mode. Oh, I'm aware of this awareness. So now I tend to use uh, not, uh, what are they called? Uh, Non-transitive verbs, just like rest. Be present, rest, be aware, rather than having an object of, of, of the verb. So, yeah, so then that's one thing. And then yeah, so then the other thing, of course, is just the terms. And uh, here also it gets a little bit difficult 
when we start to use these words like consciousness, awareness, mind, and things like that, because often in certain contexts they have very specific meanings. So it gets a little bit tricky here um, to use words, but so so maybe maybe I can just sure. uh, understand like now I'm conscious because I'm not uh, in a coma and I'm not asleep, but I'm not aware of being aware if I'm lost in thought and I'm not. But you're not. But you're not conscious of being conscious if you're lost in thought. Exactly. So it's the same. So just be conscious that you're aware. Being conscious, of course, is when you're lost as well. And awareness is happening when you're lost as well. Wait, what, what awareness is happening when you're Because the awareness is, is in some story. You can't be lost if there's no, if there's no awareness. You're either dead or asleep. <laughs> well, actually, technically, in sleep, there's awareness. So there's awareness all the time. We're just not aware of being aware. Or maybe the awareness is not here and now. Right? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. <clears throat> I mean, awareness is taking place all the time, mm -hmm. but we are to note, we are, we, we are to know that. Mm -hmm. That's a difference. <clears throat> it seems to me like maybe awareness is another word for uh, mindfulness, in a way. <sighs> yeah, again, the word awareness Unfortunately, in Buddhism is used a lot and often used by different translators to mean different things. So it gets very confusing when you see this word in different place, different text, because often the translator is translating different terms. Um, so here, the word awareness can also be a noun or a verb to be aware for awareness as a noun. So when we use it as a verb, we're, we're talking about function, to be aware. And awareness as a noun can also just mean mind. Mindfulness is a, is a particular uh, mental factor within the mind. Um, so, and also, sometimes this thing we talked about, introspection, sometimes people translate the, the original term as awareness, the word introspection. So then it gets very confusing. But we, to, I think your question is basically, if we're aware of something, mindfulness is present. Without mindfulness, we cannot be aware. But they're not, we wouldn't say exactly that they're exactly the same thing. They come together, but mindfulness is a particular mental <coughs> factor in awareness. So awareness is a, is a, a bigger term and mindfulness is more specific in this case. They, like, they, they come together though, of course. Like mindfulness, it's like awareness is, I don't know, Hand, it holds the object. It's hard for me to. Yeah, I think that we 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 need to be careful that we don't concretize these things, make them into solid things. Then we're sort of going back into the dualistic thing. But the awareness, the awareness. Not to concretize that? Yeah, in general, particularly in this practice, if we make them into concrete things, we really get into this sort of dualistic mode that awareness suddenly becomes a thing that we're, we're observing. So we need to be a little bit careful we don't do that. Can I yeah, sure. his question? Yesterday, I think it was his question, how do we behave in reality? How do we? Behave in reality every day. Right. And you said... Be mindful that you are uh, uh, brushing oh, your teeth. Sure, sure. So I'm asking, it is from the same family, what this practice, like brushing your teeth. Be mindful that you are brushing your teeth. Be aware of it. Don't yeah, be sure. sleepy. Don't be numb. Sure. So in that sense, we, in, if we speak in generally, they can mean the same thing, yes. Like, for example, if I can say something personal, with no sure. connection to Buddhism, sometimes I catch myself, I say, wow! Pay attention, you are alive. 
You're lying because it's like like uh, you know the sure, inner, inner sure. talk. So we so are, in that in that don't sense, have this experience of we are alive. Sure, in that so, sense, to to say then to be aware, to be mindful, we, you can they're more or less saying the same thing because we're speaking very generally. But here I was trying to be a little bit precise. So in general talk, to be mindful of something, to be aware of something. More or less the same thing. No, I'm not talking about the grammar point of ah. view. I'm, I'm asking, this practice is similar to our inner attitude when, when we supposed to, to brush our teeth, that we are not get sleepy. I mean, be aware you are brushing your teeth now, for yeah, heaven's right. sake. Or you are sitting, be aware you are... Right. But in this practice we're doing now, like in the breath and the mind practice we did, then we are aware of the breath, yes. we're aware of the mind, yes. and the instruction then is in daily life, be aware of brushing your teeth, yes. be aware of eating, be aware of this, be aware of that. Okay. In this practice, we're bringing that in a, on itself. Mm -hmm. So there is no process of reporting to myself that I'm aware of my awareness. <laughs> Again, we're, we're, if we sort of think like that, we're making it into a dualistic thing that there is... There's two things here. That's what I'm trying to say, not right. to do it. Not correct. Not report to myself. That, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, correct. I'm not supposed to report to myself, I'm alive and like, I'm aware of my will. I'm not supposed to, to, I, I, to return it as a mirror to myself. Yeah, I mean, again, as a beginner, of course, we probably need some little reminders of what we're supposed to be doing. Mm. So as a beginner, you may need to sort of every so often go, am I aware? No, Am I aware? No but, but then, of course, it becomes an automatic thing. You don't have to do that reminding. Mm. Okay. If I have a lot of uh, memories coming, one after the other, I don't grasp the, them and I'm aware that but they keep on coming, boom, boom, one, one after the other. Is it okay in this kind of uh, practice? Or? Yeah, so again, 